Trevor Gill here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to properly introduce an anemone. Then we're going to try different tactics to entice my clownfish to host their anemone. While there are many tactics to get your stubborn clownfish to host an anemone, my two favorite videos on this topic come from CJ's Aquariums and Me Loves YouTube channels. A link to both of their videos will be down below in the description. Before I get into the full swing of this video, I think it's important to give you guys some background information. Six years ago, I purchased these two baby black and white Ocelaris clownfish and introduced them into my then 75 gallon system. From day one, these two little guys took to the rose bubble tip anemone and never ventured more than a few inches away. Throughout the years, they grew and soon one became the dominant female and the smaller of the two, a male. For several years, they remained in their anemone until I decided to tear down the 75 gallon tank and start all over. During the eight months process of building the new system that many of you have been following, my two clownfish were housed at my local fish store. The ultimate aquarium in San Mateo, California was kind enough to take my entire livestock, including my clownfish. While my corals and fish were sold off, I kept my two clownfish. Unfortunately, during the eight months or so that they were at the local fish store, they did not have an anemone to host. Soon after my new tank finished cycling, I picked up my two clownfish and introduced them into their new home. They were the first additions into this aquarium. About a month later, I went to Aquatic Collection in Hayward, California and ran across an ultra bubble tip anemone. So like many of us do, I only went to the store to check stuff out. I had no plans on purchasing an anemone quite yet or anything else for that matter. My tank was still newly cycled, so I didn't want to add any sort of corals in the tank yet. But when I saw this anemone and I pictured my clownfish being happy inside of it, I couldn't resist. So I picked up the anemone and brought it home. While drip acclimating the anemone, I looked around the tank for a good place to put them. Anemones like to stretch their column out from deep within the rock work, so I took this into consideration. Placing an anemone directly on top of a piece of rock would surely encourage it to move in a different location. In my case, I think I found a good place where I thought the anemone would like and anchor itself into. I turned off all the pumps and gently placed the anemone inside of a rock crevice. There's never a guarantee that the anemone will stay put. I left the pumps off for a couple of hours and waited to see what it would do. If you're thinking about introducing an anemone, it's best to place it into the tank before any other corals and wait to see where it's going to settle. Otherwise, they can take a walk and start stinging any existing corals. Look for a deep crevice in the rock work the anemone can sink itself into and an area where there'll be sufficient light and medium to high flow. For the next several days, the anemone was shriveled up inside the rock work, but it looked like it had attached itself nicely. Eventually, the anemone stretched its column out of the rock work and opened its tentacles. After a few weeks, it was clear this anemone was going to stay put. It showed no signs of being unhappy. It was getting plenty of light and plenty of flow. But there was one aggravating problem. My two clownfish could have given two hoots over this anemone. I had pictured these guys nose diving into the anemone. After all, they spent five years of their life living and spawning in one. But the past eight months of being free swimmers at the Ultimate Aquarium had made them forget all about the wonderful times they had in their anemone. After several weeks, my hopes of them hosting this anemone were shot. In hindsight, my chances might have been better had I had the anemone in the tank before introducing the clownfish. Of course, these were thoughts I had after the fact, so there's no point in crying over it now. These two clownfish looked lost to me. They were hosting the underside of the overflow box. It was time for me to come up with a plan to see if I could get them back into the anemone, if at all possible. I had a slight advantage here. These guys were no strangers to anemone, so I figured I could get them to host it one way or another. But I knew if I failed, this anemone was going to be removed. The only reason I wanted an anemone was for the clowns to host it. If they weren't going to be interested, then I wanted no part of having an anemone inside of a tank. They split. They grow very large and on rare occasions they tend to go on walks around the tank. Once this tank is full of corals, the last thing I want to deal with is a rogue anemone. With that said, one of the coolest things about having a reef tank is watching the symbiotic relationship between clownfish and an anemone. In these cases, it makes having an anemone worth the troubles in my opinion. You have a front row seat to a great show. Although I haven't seen these guys feed this particular anemone, they have taken chunks of frozen foods, spit it out into the previous anemone's tentacles. In turn, the anemone provides a clownfish with protection against predators and a safe area for the clownfish to spawn. Just some really, really cool stuff to watch. So my first attempt to entice the clowns to host the anemone consisted of me using a glass scraper. Using the scraper to herd the two clowns toward the anemone. I spent a total of about two hours spread out through a week or so. 
The clownfish were definitely aware the anemone was inside the tank. At times, it looked like there was a chance the clowns were going to go inside of it. Other attempts, I watched them stare at the anemone, but as soon as the threat of the scraper was gone, both clownfish swam back to their spot underneath the overflow. It became clear after a little longer than a week of trying this technique, it was not going to work. I ended up chalking this one up as a fail. My next idea consisted of not feeding the clownfish for a couple of days. When I finally did feed them, I placed a piece of frozen food inside the anemone's tentacles. Now I normally don't direct feed anemones in my tank. They just get way too big, way too fast. Instead, they catch any floating food or any food that's given to them by the clownfish. Otherwise, they just feed off the light from the LEDs. Initially, the clownfish ate pieces of food that floated away from the anemone. On a couple of occasions, things looked promising. The clownfish looked very interested in going into the anemone for a few more bites of food. They swam in front of the anemone, they circled it, and they stared at it. But after trying this technique a few times during the course of a couple of weeks, I had to also scratch this off as a fail. My third plan consisted of catching the clownfish, then immediately reintroducing them into the tank by hand. I had hoped by releasing the clownfish directly into the anemone's tentacles would work. I didn't want to stress out the clownfish any more than I needed to, so I only tried this once. As you can see, this was a big fail. The clownfish was released and immediately sped away from the area of the anemone. Dang it! I had one more plan I wanted to try. This was honestly going to be the last attempt. Should this next plan not work, this anemone was going to come out and this tank was going to be anemoneless. 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 No anemone. We netted both clownfish and placed them inside the sump. Both clownfish stayed here for two weeks. In the meantime, my fish in the quarantine tank were ready to be located into the display tank. Now I know some of you are saying to yourselves, I just watched your video on introducing the fish into the quarantine a week ago. True, but if you follow me on Instagram, you know I actually introduced these new fish into the quarantine tank several weeks ago. After about two weeks of being in the sump, it was time to reintroduce the clownfish into the main display. My hope is that they had forgotten about hosting the underside of the overflow box and the new addition of tank mates would assist in confusing them. I also had to consider exactly how I wanted to approach this plan. I didn't want to introduce both clownfish at the same time. I wanted to focus on just one clownfish at a time. Since the female was larger, a slower swimmer, easier to net if necessary to remove her from the display tank again, and was the dominant of the two clownfish, I decided to bring her into the display tank first. My hope was that I would be able to entice the female clown into the anemone. Should I succeed, then the likelihood would be that the male clown would stay close to the dominant female. I thought it was more likely for the male to follow the female than the other way around. These were all my thoughts when I planned out which fish to introduce into the display first. As you see, I used the scraper again, this time only with the female in what she considered a new environment full of new fish and a very aggressive sea monster of a scraper. After about 20 minutes, I noticed the female was staying very close to the anemone. She was definitely sizing things up here. Without the male's distraction, things were looking pretty good. On occasion, I noticed the female back her rear end up into the anemone and used her tail to pat the tentacles of the anemone, almost as if she was using Morse code to communicate with it. After about 30 minutes, success! I was so freaking pumped. The female was inside the anemone and loving it. She was all about the anemone. On occasion, she would swim away, but as soon as I dropped in the scraper, she would make a mad dash back into the anemone. I let her enjoy the anemone and waited until I was confident she was comfortable staying inside of it. After about 15 minutes, she seemed like she was going to stay put inside the anemone. So, okay, now it was time to introduce the male. Like I said, I felt it was more likely for him to follow her than the other way around. I was really hoping I made the right decision introducing her into the display first. So in the male went. To my relief, the male didn't freak out and speed away. Instead, he seemed very interested in what the female was doing. There were a couple of times the male tried to wander off, but I used my trusty scraper to keep the male close to the anemone. It wasn't too long, maybe 10 minutes, and the male also took refuge inside the anemone. I'm telling you guys, I was super excited. I was fist pumping. I was shouting. I was very, very happy. It's been over five days since these two took to the anemone. I do see them venture off to explore their tank and new tank mates, something they didn't do in the 75 gallon system, but that's okay. They always return to the anemone and have been sleeping in it every night. 
There was one day the anemone completely closed up and withdrew within the rock work, but the next day it was out and fully extended. If you used any other techniques that worked or didn't work, put them down in the comments below. As usual, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscription button, hit that like button, follow me on Instagram to get real-time updates. The link to that is down below in the description. Thanks for watching and we will see you guys next Sunday.